Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome to the November 2024 sheet load process video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the new sheet load of cards printable, which if you haven't yet downloaded it and you want to, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video, which is linked in that description box below. Also joining me today and sharing their sets is the creative team and our November 2024 guest artist. To see the rest of the videos, it's super easy. Down in the description box below or the end card at the end of this video is a linked playlist. You can just click on there and watch one video right after the other. I also have everybody's channels linked down in the description box if you would rather use those. I do know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. Yesterday I shared a look at the main supplies and I'll talk about them again today when I get into the process, but as always if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get to the process, I did want to stop by with a special channel member shout out. I would like to say welcome to my newest paper trimmer level members, Bev Woods and Marcina McCutcheon. Thank you so much ladies for your membership. Thank you as well to all of my other channel members who keep me creating here on YouTube and help keep Sheetload of Cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, you can click on the join button below this video or check out the link in the description box below. To get started on the cards, I'm going to cut my two pieces of pattern paper per the instructions on the cutting guide. I'm going to start by cutting two rows that are five and a quarter inches tall. Now if your pattern paper is directional like mine is, make sure to keep that in mind when you're making the first cut. I'm going to rotate so the top of mine is over there on the right side and then once again I'm going to cut those two rows at five and a quarter inches. There is a little bit of scrap left over and later I'll show you how I use some of that. Now I'm going to take my two five and a quarter inch tall rows and rotate them back around so they're reading the right way and I'm going to cut two pieces that are four inches wide from each of these strips and these are going to be pattern paper piece A. There is going to be four inches left over just set that off to the side for now while you cut two piece A's from that second row. Now we're going to take the sections that were left over and because pattern paper piece B doesn't need to be quite as tall, I'm going to cut each of these to four and three quarters inches tall. Once that is shortened a little bit, I'm going to once again rotate them and cut each piece into six pieces that are a half an inch wide. To make this easy, I'm going to use the mark to the left of my cut line and just slide my pattern paper from right to left cutting in half inch sections. Now you will want to make sure you keep these pieces in order because if you look on the card sample or on the sketch on the front of the printable, it does kind of flow from left to right on that mat. You'll want to cut another set of three pieces from this first piece and then you'll grab that second four inch piece and do the same thing. Now when I get to the end there isn't really room for my fingers to hold the pattern paper so I temporarily held that down with a piece of removable tape. So later I know which three pieces go together. I did kind of offset them as I stack them over to the right. The pattern papers I'm using today are from Cartabella and it is from the Harvest line. If you want to check out more about it, I do have some links down in the description box below. Once that first piece of pattern paper was cut, I brought in my second one and cut it in the same exact way. While I work on that, I wanted to stop by with another special channel member shout out. But this one is for some members who earned their one year membership badge in the month of October. So scrolling up on screen now are their names.
Thank you so very much for your continued support. It really does mean the world to me. Once I had both of the pattern papers cut, it was time to cut CS1, which is a single sheet of cardstock cut into eight pieces that are two by five inches. This is gonna be the mat for that trio of pattern paper piece Bs that we just finished cutting. For my cardstock, I chose a piece of pumpkin from Tailored Expressions. You're gonna wanna rotate your piece and cut two rows that are five inches tall and then leave them at that eight and a half inches wide that the cardstock already is. Once those are done, you'll rotate each of those back around and cut four pieces that are two inches wide from both the top and bottom that we just cut. You'll keep going until you have eight total pieces. Next up are the card bases, and for this you'll want four pieces of cardstock that you cut in half and then fold in half. Now the sketch suggests a top fold card, but if you prefer a book fold card, you can definitely do that as well. For my card bases, I chose an off-white cardstock because that is kind of the background of one of those pattern papers. And all I'm going to do is cut the four pieces in half at four and a quarter inches wide and leave them at the 11 inches tall. And I could go ahead and fold these by hand now, but I do like to add a score with my mini score buddy so that when I fold those and reinforce it with the bone folder, I get a nice crisp fold each time. All of the main pieces are cut, so it's time to start a little assembly. The first thing I did was bring in my cardstock mats and the sets of pattern paper. Now before I start gluing pieces down, I do want to make sure that I lay out my pattern papers, especially this first one, in the order that they'll go on the mat so that I know the picture or the scene flows correctly. Then what I'm going to do is adhere the outside two pieces first. I'm going to put a little ATG on the back of the left strip and then I place it onto the mat so there's about an eighth of an inch border on those outside edges. Then I'm going to grab the right piece and do the same thing but on the opposite side of the cardstock. And finally, I add adhesive to the center and then this one just gets centered left to right between the first two strips and it just gets set top to bottom just like those as well. I think this is easier than trying to go left to right and trying to judge exactly what your spacing should be. Let me know how you like to do things like this down in that comment section below. Now I'm going to move on to the second pattern paper and I will let you know for this one because that pattern in the back is so subtle I did not worry about laying it out exactly how they were cut. I didn't think anyone would notice and this just helped it go a little bit faster. I wanted to show you what a set of each look like put together and for the rest of these since it is so repetitive I did do most of this off screen until all eight sets of the pattern paper strips were matted. Once those were all put together I brought in pattern paper A and now I'm going to adhere these sets together. For this I did mix them up so the pumpkin paper will go on top of the orange pattern paper and the orange pattern paper will go on top of the pumpkin. Now as the sketch suggests you could put this over on the left with even outside borders or you could move it around for what fits your taste or maybe your sentiment or your focal point. Again, sheet load is a great jumping off point for you to make these cards your own. I did decide to go ahead and follow the sketch and I put my pattern paper strips on the left sides of each of the larger pieces. And once again, because this is pretty repetitive, I finished adhering the rest of these off camera. Once those were all done, I brought back in my card bases and adhered the pattern papers to the front center, trying to get a nice even border all the way around. I am keeping everything nice and flat for now for easy mailing. Now it's time to get a sentiment added to the front of the cards. I do suggest a two and a half inch circle for your image or your sentiment, but you can definitely switch that up if you want. 
For me, I am actually using a free printable that my channel members will have access to for my sentiments. It is a two page PDF. One has some light circles so you know where to die cut and the second page doesn't in case you wanna cut it into squares or use a different size or shape die. If you're a channel member who would like access to this bonus printable, check out the membership tab later today or the monthly blogs for the links. You're gonna wanna look for an image like you see on screen now. I have a two page PDF available, or if you want to try to recolor it, I also have an SVG and PNG files. And speaking of recoloring, that is what I did for mine. Now I was able to edit it in the original software I created it in, and I tried to match the mint green from the pumpkins. Again, I'm hoping you'll have access to something like maybe a Canva or another photo editing software if you want to recolor the SVG or PNG. I printed mine on the same off-white cardstock I used for the card bases, and before I sent it through the die cutter, I did cut it into strips. I didn't have a die that was exactly two and a half inches, but you will see that mine is pretty close, and here's what those finished pieces look like cut. At this point, I did decide to add some dimension, so off camera I put some foam tape strips on the back of each sentiment. Now here is another place where you could make this your own. You can move this sentiment up, down, left or right on your card fronts, again, to just reflect your taste and what you think looks best. For me, I am going to stick with the sketch and put it toward the top center. Let me know down in that comment section below how you might switch up your sheet load this month. What adjustments are you going to make? Once I had all of the sentiments put on the cards, to finish them off I added some orange glitter drip drops from Tailored Expressions. Also off camera I used some of the scraps of pattern paper on the inside for a little added decoration. And now here are some close up looks at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using the November 2024 sheet load and got a few tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit the creative team's videos to see what they've created. You can use a playlist which will show up here in just a minute or the links in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.